Hey there, Sharon Hernels. I'm here with Super Size Business, sharing super sizing business growth strategies in different industries and in different ways that you can apply them to your industry. Today, we're talking about paying attention to the trends and the changes in real estate marketing in order to supersize and grow your business. Now, I think we've talked about pretty much all of these strategies before, but today we're going to talk to them in light of the real estate industry. For example, yesterday we talked about uh, virtual reality and its application in real estate and real estate tours specifically. Today, I, I think I mentioned yesterday, I've been in real estate for geez, four decades or so, which is a really long time in real estate years or in any industry, because you get to see the changing trends, the changing markets. And that's something you want to pay attention to as part of any strategy or any business that you're growing and running and wanting to supersize. So staying on top of what's going on, adapting to the marketing changes are critical. Uh, I've seen so many different things happen in the real estate industry. It's like people that watch the stock market or different uh, categories of investments. They see things come and go and they see what affects things and what doesn't affect things. You know, depending on the economy, depending on inventory levels, depending on consumer preferences will determine what is selling when and to whom. So we want to stay on top of the market changes and what's going on in the market as well as adapting to them, right? Sometimes our strategies have to change. Uh, I grew up in the real estate industry when fix and flips were a thing, when no money down was a thing, when short sales were a thing. I was like a total short sale expert and could negotiate with any lender, any bank on anything for a solid five years when short sales were, were not easy. They're easier to do if you know how. Uh, all of these strategies are easy to apply when done correctly, right? Every strategy I talk about, you can do well or you can screw up and not get any results from it at all. So let's look at the ones that we know can impact real estate for sure, as well as your business. Number one, the rise of digital marketing. Digital marketing is here to stay. Online marketing, the internet is here to stay. If you don't have an online presence, you are at a distinct competitive advantage. I can say that 100% certainty nowadays, if people can't find you online to do some research or to get some interaction with your company and engage with it, they are not going to do business with you. Uh, the days of the no online presence, somebody's just going to walk into your business and do business with you are pretty much over in real estate for sure, but in many industries as well. Unless you're strictly a mom and pop local business and that's all you want to be, you got to have an online presence. I think I've been saying this for at least a decade now, but it's become even more important now. And that, of course, involves making sure that you have SEO, search engine optimization for your website. Is it quick? Does it load fast? Do you have a mobile app or a mobile version? If it doesn't look good on mobile nowadays, it's probably not a great idea if, you know, the days of designing for your website, because everybody's going to go to your website are pretty much over because everybody, not everybody, but billions of people are walking around with a computer in their hand. So you want to make sure that your presence, your brand presence, your website, your funnel, whatever you're using looks good on mobile and is easy to use on mobile. Uh, importance of content marketing. Again, a lot of these are all, well, it's all marketing strategies, but uh, the importance of content marketing it shouldn't be underestimated either. People find people. They want to know that you are, you know, your stuff and that you're a leader in your industry. So you want to share content that's relevant, engaging, and important to them. doesn't matter what you want to write about necessarily. It's what do the people you want to serve want to hear about and what do they need to know in order to choose you to do business with. Uh, so we want to have a, a well-executed content strategy, a distinctive brand. We talked about that, too, pretty extensively. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but you need to find a way to do video marketing. You don't have to show up with your face like I do, but you have to find a way to find somebody that can represent and do video marketing for your business. Video is such a powerful tool when it comes especially to real estate. Works for any industry, but for real estate in particular because you can automate a lot of the things that you otherwise have to run around with people doing. Uh, third, we want to leverage data and analysis. We want to get information. We are past the information age. We're at the attention age nowadays, according to marketing experts. But 
That means we have to use all the things that we learned in the information age and apply them to the attention age and figure out what information, what data is important to more clearly speak to and reach the people that we want to serve. Uh, we want to use the power of personalization. AI and email marketing make this incredibly possible. Do you have an email list? Are you, do you have a CRM customer management system so that you can keep track of your interactions and conversations with them? Wouldn't it be awesome if in our businesses we would offer somebody something once and they would accept it and become our customer? Yes, that would be ideal. But I think now I, I've lost track of the statistics. It used to be seven touch points, then it was 12, then it was 20 something. And who knows now how many times people have to be exposed to you and your brand before they'll do business with you. And when it comes to real estate, real estate is usually a one or two times in a lifetime investment for people. Uh, and I'm not talking about real estate investors. That's a whole uh, different breed, definitely a different breed, real estate investors. And I can say that with certainty because I am one. Uh, but when it comes to people buying a home or if, if you're in, you know, house and home real estate, it's different than if you are selling businesses and business real estate uh, or apartments and things. So we want to make sure that we are customizing and serving people the information and the products and services that are personalized to them. The more sophisticated we get as human beings, the more we want the personal touch, the more we want to know that our experience is going to be slightly different and we want it tailored to us as customers. Uh, we want to embrace technology and innovation. We talked about VR and real estate tours yesterday, augmented reality, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's all starting to play a role in different industries than it started out in, right? Remember, VR started out in gaming and entertainment, and now it's moved into all different sectors of the economy. Uh, artificial intelligence as well is being used to customize and create seamless experiences, answer questions 24-7 via chatbots and things. We also want to keep in mind the role of the importance of social proof and online reviews. Guess what? One of the first places people go when they want to find out if a business is good or not is to the online review sites. Now, are they always accurate? No. Are they uh, sometimes skewed in one direction or the other? Yes, but part of your job as a business owner is to have somebody, if you're not doing it yourself, monitor and keep track of what's showing up in the online world about your business, about your brand, about your products and services. And responding to those in a positive way for your business. Uh, I've seen so many businesses do this wrong. They get all mad and upset whenever they get any negative feedback. And then they attack the person that gave them the feedback or the business that gave them the feedback. And it turns into a bloody battle and war. Never pretty, right? There's always a positive way to fix and repair. And if you want to build a long-term business, you're going to repair the things that people have a bad experience with. You're not going to blame them for having a bad experience. Uh, the role, okay, so we're talking about social proof and online reviews. Social proof, testimonials, video testimonials, we've talked about those. Those are awesome. Uh, they let people share their story in their own words of their experience working with you. Put those on your website. Put those on your uh, app. Put them on whatever it is that you use, your marketing to communicate with people. You can use a QR code to go to a video and people can just scan that on their phone and watch it on their phone in your pamphlets, any of your printed material, etc. Uh, we want to continue to network and build relationships. Guess what? Business is all about relationships. So if we're not networking, if we stop networking, we might stop some of the flow of customers and referrals to our business. We want to, again, finally adapt to market changes. I, I think that's what this is all about. We have to be aware of, pay attention to what's going on, in consumer preferences, in your industry, in regulation, in taxation, in whatever might impact the people that you serve as well as your business directly. Make sure that you're paying attention to those things. So I don't know if I, I got, let's, let's just summarize the list of eight areas to consider. Number one, we want to pay attention to trends in real estate and real estate marketing in order to supersize and grow our business. We do that by, uh, taking into account the role of digital marketing, have a website by, I cannot read my own writing, <laughs> uh, the importance of content marketing and making sure that we are providing content that is relevant and engaging to the people that we're here to serve. Remember 
We're not here to serve everybody. You have a target group of people that you love to work with and that lights you up. Those are the people that you want to build your business on. Uh, it, and this is one of those mistakes we only make usually once or twice in business. We, we work with the wrong client, the wrong customer, and it is very painful. And if you've ever had to fire a supplier or a vendor or an employee or a customer, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Relationships are so important in our business that we want to make sure we're consciously choosing the relationships that we grow and, and be involved in. So the importance of content marketing, uh, including video marketing, leveraging data and analytics, the power of personalization, enhancing and embracing technology and innovation, the role of social proof and online reviews, uh, oh, share case studies and success stories. People love case studies and success stories. Share them on your marketing materials, whether it's online or offline. Uh, networking and building relationships and then adapting to market changes. We need to make sure that we're considering all those things as we're creating our marketing strategy to super send for our business. That's it. That's all I've got today. It's Sunday in my neck of the woods, so I've got some projects going on. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, have an awesome day. And I will be with you tomorrow, hopefully with a more concise, concise uh, marketing strategy to supersize and grow your business. Have a great day.